data analysis and report writing training course for civil registration based vital statistics. And because we do not know each other or we don't know who is on the call, it will be nice to do a round of introductions. And um, I will call upon country participants. If you could please introduce yourselves by giving us your name, telling us which organization you're working for. Um, let's see, David is about to upload some slides for us to guide our introduction ses session. So yeah, if you could just tell us who you are, what your role is in, in civil registration data, if at all, and then um, you could also mention what you'd like to get out of the course. And, um, and I think we can cover the data elements later a quick introduction of yourself and where you work and how you're involved in CRVS and your expectations from the course will be will be good to know. And then at the end of that, we will get the facilitators who are also online to introduce themselves. So I'll call upon countries that have enrolled for the course. So let's start off with um, Palau. Palau, please um, feel free to introduce yourself. Oh, we can't hear you, Alison. You're muted. Hey, sorry, forgot. Good morning. My name is Alison Sogabao. I'm with the Civil Registry, uh, aka the Clerk of Courts. What I want to get out of this course is to learn how to do data analysis writing and um, uh, foster more collaboration effort with the Ministry of Health in regards to the vital stats that's transmitted to our office. And the data that I brought with me is basically the births and deaths generated. Wonderful. Um, do we have other colleagues from um, Palau? We're supposed to. We're supposed to have our team from the Ministry of Health, medical records, and one from our census. Okay. Uh, we'll go around and maybe they'll they'll be joining later on. Um, RMI. Yeah, good well, everyone. Um, <clears throat> my name is Roman Smith. Uh, I'm working with the vital statistic department here at the Ministry of Health, and um, the data that I have with me is uh, births and deaths data. For which years? You, you don't mind mentioning the years? For the deaths, um, I'm using the one that you I sent it to you over 10 years. And uh, for the births, I have five years from 2016 up to 2020 data. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from RMI? Um, <clears throat> not sure. Adeline was supposed to be showing, but probably she's coming late. Okay. Not sure about uh, the other uh, department. Uh, I mean, uh, government. Thank you. Agencies. Okay. All right. That's all right. Thank you. Um, Kiribas. Maori. Maori. Yeah, I'm done. I'm here with the with my uh, the, the vital statistician. <coughs> Sorry, something wrong with the laptop, so we're using the this one right now at the moment. <coughs> um, we're from the civil registration office. Mm. <coughs> Uh, we have the our data the data with us the death and birth from 2015 to 21. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vanuatu. Hi. Hello. Hello. Okay, um, I'm Salome from the Vanuatu National Statistics Office with my colleague here, Matu. 
Pilamatu from the CRPS. Um, we have with us here the pet data from 2016 to 2020 and um, also the death from uh, 2015. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Salome. Some more? Anyone from Samoa? Tupai, I think Tupai, can you hear us, Tupai? Okay. Um, anyone else who has not introduced themselves from the countries? I, my name is Mandela from, from civil registration in Kiribati. Thank you, Mantarai. Thank you. Mm. And we part. have um, two other other colleagues from other ministries, um, Ministry of Health and Statistics, the finance. But you know, today is a public holiday of the Kiribati, Independence Day. We start our uh, celebration from the from Thursday to Tuesday. So now it, it's for on the public holidays. So thank you. Nice thank to you. meet you guys. Same here. Thank you. And thank you for that information. Um, we will make sure that we pass on the course materials for today to your to your colleagues who are still on holiday mode. And sorry for having that overlap with uh, your holiday days. <laughs> no worries. Right. So I think then we will just go around as facilitators on the call and I'll, I can begin with myself. My name is Gloria Mathenge and I am with SPC uh, working on civil registration and vital statistics and very happy to be here with you today. Thank you. I think I'll be the next one. So my name is David Roses. I am with the uh, Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific in the statistics division uh, in uh, Bangkok and I uh, work on the CIVS and I'm here with uh, some colleagues. So there's also Chloe. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Chloe Harvey and I'm with the UNSCAT CIVS team in the statistics division and I'll be supporting the facilitation of this course and I look forward to working with you all. Thank you. Chris, you want to go ahead? Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Chris Boito, and I also work with the CRVS team here in SCAP in, in Bangkok, uh, and I will be uh, supporting the, the course as well. So I look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Elise. Uh, and uh, finally, for the people in Bangkok, we have Petra. And oh, sorry, and also Pim. So Petra, maybe you can go first and then Pim. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, David. Um, my name is Petra Nachmias. Um, I'm Chief of Population and Social Statistics section, which includes CRVS at UNSCAP. Uh, uh, I'll be facilitating one of the courses further down the line. I'll be trying to pop in and see how things are going with the other sessions to get a, an idea of the, of the flow. So we're uh, looking forward to meeting you all. Thank you. Good morning from Bangkok. My name is Nasikan and I'm working with the IVS team at um, Statistic Division SCAP. Nice to meet you virtually. Bye. Thank you, Pim. And then we can maybe go with our colleagues uh, from SCAP Pacific. So first, Chris. Yeah, thanks, David, and good morning and afternoon, everyone. So my name is Chris Ryan. I'm the statistician with the SCAP Pacific office. And I'll be one of the facilitators throughout this workshop, um, in particular on modules four and five on birth and fertility analysis, but I'll be popping in from time to time for other sessions as well. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. And uh, finally, Rosa. 
Hi everyone, I'm Rosa. I work with Chris at the ESCA Pacific office as their national planning and monitoring specialist. I'll be supporting the workshop in the background. Nice to meet you. Bye. Thank you. Um, yeah, big team we have on the call here. So uh, to officially begin, um, uh, thank you again everyone for joining the call and for joining the training. We will be working, all of us will be working with you and in particular today's session, we will be co-facilitating um, the session with uh, David and, and Chloe. And um, just to begin with um, the session, let's first uh, do some housekeeping. The basic rules are just to mute our microphones when we are not um, speaking and um, you can feel free to use the hand feature to stop us at any time if you have any questions or you if you need something uh, repeated or um, presented in more detail. So we will be, we encourage you to feel free to interject at any point. This is going to be a very informal setting and uh, we are looking forward to you talking more and engaging us on questions and giving us your country experiences. So um, as a way of background, um, this data analysis and report writing course is something that uh, a number of you could have participated previously. Um, it is usually held by the Brisbane Accord Group and we try to hold it every two years since 2014. And usually the course brings together CRVS stakeholders, let me call it civil registration and vital statistics stakeholders um, from, uh, from countries. And we aim to work with them to develop what we call a vital statistics report. So, and the objective here is to um, zoom into the data that is collected by civil registration offices and analyze it. And we analyze it so that we get an idea of how the civil registration system in itself is performing. And we also aim to make this data available for policy and planning. Um, so we aim to support to support to work with you to develop valuable in valuable information or indicators from this data which your government can find uh, useful. So yes, um, let's move on to the next slide so we you've had probably in our introductory remarks um, many of us are talking about crvs crvs and i don't know um whether all of us know what crvs means so when we talk when you say crvs we are referring to civil registration and vital statistics and on this slide i will first um, go through what civil registration is and this is the process in a layman's language is basically the process that governments use to maintain information about identity and civil status of the members of a population so basically the government will ask uh, the public to report about every baby that is born or every death that is born usually there are 10 events that the un has identified that are recommended for governments to register and these are called yeah these are called vital events so the process of maintaining that information is what is called civil registration and usually it's conducted for two main purposes the first one is to create legal records about individuals and these records um, which yield certificates such as birth certificates and death certificates they are very useful documents in terms of um, realization of human rights you know all of us need birth certificates like to apply for passports or to identify ourselves in different places in government and um, it's an it's it's these are documents that each of us uh, who are a part of this course have been able to interact with. So yeah, the first purpose is that to create legal records, which are used by individuals to identify themselves. And then the second purpose of the system is that it derives data that can that is used for compilation of vital statistics. So those are the two key purposes for which civil registration is maintained. And then when we talk about vital statistics, we are basically talking about statistics about vital events. And these are statistics that are important in, in terms of supporting governments to, to plan and to make policies in various areas. And right now with the COVID-19 pandemic, all of us have experienced the value of vital statistics because every government is collecting data on deaths 
and causes of death to help in planning and you know to report on where are there more you know cases and where should vaccines be administered and uh, be administered and in a similar way birth statistics are important they help governments to plan for instance if you're collecting statistics about um, children of a particular age you can be able to a government can determine how many schools are needed in which area how many hospitals are needed in which area and even in planning for infrastructure such as roads and, and it's 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 really cross sectoral when you have data on basic births deaths and other vital events um there's so much that the government makes use or can can make use of there's so there are so many uses for which governments can put um that data um into use so uh when we talk about sources of vital statistics there are several sources of vital statistics and one of them is censuses surveys we also have civil registration and health information systems and these are systems that basically collect information about uh, vital events however among all their sources of vital statistics usually the un has recognized civil registration to be the most ideal source of vital statistics and in the later slides we will cover why is civil registration considered a unique and you know valuable source of vital statistics when compared to the other sources oh all the other sources are also valuable but i mean why is civil registration considered the most ideal source of vital statistics and then we also want to mention that when we don't have vital statistics or when we don't have this kind of data available then our countries end up modeling data and using assumptions to you know to tell what is likely to be happening and what as compared to what is really happening so when you're talking about real births and real deaths your country can be able to determine what exactly is happening within a population as compared to making assumptions around what could be happening and then um here david is it at this point where you'd like to ask some questions yes exactly so just give me a second so that we kind of Break a bit the flow and we get uh, some of you to interact with us. We prepared a few questions for you. Mm. Uh, I hope you can see my screen. So I would invite you to either use your smartphone and scan the uh, QR code you can see on the screen, or you can go to menti.com and enter the following code. So 1237-6450. And I think my colleague Chloe is also putting the link. So you can also just click on the link that we have in the chat box in the meeting chat. So I'll leave that here for a few David, seconds. I think you need to cover a bit of how do we go about that. Should we just link, click on the link on the website or? Yeah, either you can click on the, the link or you can use your smartphone and scan the QR code. OK. I think I'll just go for the first question. So we wanted to know from you whether you've ever been involved in the production of vital statistics based on the registration records and whether that has been um, you've done the analysis of the completeness of birth and death registration as well as uh, producing tabulations on birth and death or whether you've just done the analysis of the completeness of birth and death so that might be maybe for the those of you who are civil registrars or working the civil registration office you've just uh, used these records to analyze the completeness or whether you've never been involved in uh, the production of vital statistics based on civil registration records. So we got one response so far. So if you haven't had the chance to uh, scan the QR code, you can just go on the meeting chat and click on the link um, that my, Chloe, uh, my colleague Chloe put, uh, put there. Oh, 
OK, and I see another response in the meeting chat, which is yes. Um, so at least two of you have already been involved in the production of Python statistics based on registration records. Um, I, I don't know who exactly it is, but uh, whether one of you want to explain what you've done previously um, and when you've done that work, uh, you can maybe uh, just give us a bit more information about that. OK, um, anybody wants to want to um, just give us a bit more uh, information on what they've done previously or the experience with um, using Vita, uh, civil registration records for vital statistics? Please do not hesitate to talk or to raise your hand. Can you allow me to put some people on the spot? Uh, David? Yes, I see actually uh, two pie. Two pie. Cool, yeah. yes. Please, Tupai, go ahead. You can uh, take the floor. Okay, maybe in the meantime, Gloria, you can. Uh... Yes, I wanted to put um, a few people on the spot. I know Palau has had some previous efforts to to work on a vital statistics report, if I'm not wrong. And um, also our colleague Mantarai from uh, Kiribati may have some experiences with that. So I wanted to ask whether they would allow me to call on them to tell us um, when or how um, or in what format they did go through that process. Any remarks from any country? Um, well, I remember working with Anna, Anna Jean Suma, I think. Um, she had asked us some questions about um, our vital stats birth, going back five years, uh, birth and death um, stats, and we worked with the Ministry of Health to try to reconcile those, what, how many live births and how many certificates have occurred in uh, registry, and through that process, we found out that we had some discrepancies, so from then until now, we're, we're trying to work on those uh, uh, what happens is a lot of times people um, have uh, births occur, but they're not registered until the time that they actually need a record, like for educational purposes or for insurance purposes. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Palau. Okay, I see. Um, Tupai, you see, still have your hand raised. Do you want to take the floor? Okay. Um, so maybe, oh yeah, we see a response from Tupai in the chat. So weekly collection of birth and death records from hospitals. Okay. Uh, so let me maybe continue with the, the presentation. It's going to take a bit of time. OK. So um, there, there's a lot of commitment of countries in um, not only in the Pacific, but uh, globally to improving CIVS. Uh, and, and more specifically in the Pacific, uh, there's um, there has been a lot of recognition of the importance of CIVS, uh, and uh, commitments have been made uh, under the 10-year Pacific Strategic Strate uh, Statistics Strategy, um, also as part of the Pacific Ministers of Health and various heads of health health meetings, as part of the heads of planning and statistics meeting. So those are the commitments that have been uh, made in the Pacific. 
In Asia and the Pacific, so we have the uh, sea registration and vital statistics decade. And um, as part of this decade, uh, many countries, and not only the, the ones in the Pacific, but also in uh, South Asia, like uh, Nepal, for example, in Central Asia, like Kyrgyzstan, uh, have made commitment towards improving their sea registration and vital statistics decade. And uh, that has been done uh, as part of the implementation of the Regional Action Framework on CIVS in Asia and the Pacific. So there's really this uh, large uh, momentum in Asia and the Pacific, and we'll have uh, a ministerial conference to uh, celebrate progress, but also look at the challenges ahead of us. Um, and that will take place on the, in November this year. So Pacific countries will also have the chance to, uh, to interact. Um, sorry, I think. Just let me mute. Could, could you kind of mute yourself? Um, in addition, at the global level, um, civil registration or CIVS in general is uh, really recognized uh, as an important uh, part of the 2030 agenda for sustainable development. And there are a couple of targets, actually three targets that are on civil registration uh, itself. So there's target 16.9. Uh, on the universal, uh, on, on legal identity for all, uh, including birth registration. There are two other targets as part of goal 17 uh, on the universal, so 100% of birth registered by 2030 and 80% of death registered by 2030. And uh, uh, all countries in the world have made those commitments. So it's really an important part of the 2030 agenda. In addition, the data you can, uh, the vital statistics you can use from our uh, take from sea registration records also are important and critical to monitor the sustainable development goals. And uh, I think there are more than 60 indicators uh, for which CIVS data uh, can be used. So that really highlights the importance of, uh, of this data. And for this reason, it's really important uh, to harness registration records for vital statistics. And as Loria mentioned, there, there are some kind of a unique source of vital statistics. Uh, first, because they provide data on a continuous basis, and that's not, for example, the case for surveys or censuses. And uh, since civil registration record, uh, civil registration should cover the uh, entire country or territory, uh, that data can um, can be disaggregated at the lowest level of geography. Um, it's also a very cost-effective solution to produce vital statistics um, if, the, of course, the civil registration uh, system is, is well functioning since it requires fewer resources uh, than uh, for conducting a survey. And finally, and that may be a point that is important for, for the countries uh, where civil registration is maybe not uh, complete. Um, using the civil registration data for vital statistics um, can uh, really provide uh, or help address or identify system-wide issues. So even for countries maybe which are like registering, let's say 60% of their birth, the analysis of the completeness that will be done as part of a vital statistics report, uh, where you see well whether the completeness is improving or not over the years, maybe there will be analysis at the sub-national sub level. Uh, that can help the civil registration office um, address or identify some of the issues and realize that uh, some of the territories or populations uh, are not being covered by uh, or fully covered by civil registration. And in return, that will improve the civil registration system, which will improve vital statistics, which again can improve civil registration. So that's really a positive feedback loop. And uh, that's very important. And that's why we encourage countries which maybe do not have uh, universal civil registration to still use that data for vital statistics. So in terms of data availability, um, in many countries, um, and then I, I have a map here that is from the midterm report of the CIVS decade that we launched uh, two weeks ago and you can find online. Um, so many countries still uh, have, uh, do not have a uh, uh, well-functioning uh, CIVS system, so they, they have lower level of uh, registration completeness. And uh, because of that, they uh, may not uh, use that data for vital statistics. Um, and even in countries which have a good uh, or well-functioning system, the data, the civil registration data is uh, maybe not always uh, used or used regularly for vital statistics, and there's still a reliance on, uh, on other sources of vital statistics, such as surveys. Um, so in this map, you can see in red that the countries for which reported not using uh, registration data 
for vital statistics, and we have also many countries in grey for which we didn't have any information. Um, but there are quite a number of countries actually in the Pacific that are using registration records for vital statistics, and they're in blue on the map. Unfortunately, I don't have the names um, of all these countries. Um, one thing that is important to know is that for many of these countries, they, they may use uh, this data, but it might not be on a regular basis. So it's done as part of a vital statistics report like we are going to do uh, in, the, in the coming weeks. Um, every every four or five years. So it's really important to ensure um, um, that the C registration data is used and is routinely made available for statistical use, uh, is also analyzed uh, as well as reported um, so to the public and uh, is being used to inform decision makers. Oh, sorry. And for this reason, um, that's the expected outcome of this course. So through this course, um, you will develop a draft vital statistics report for your country based on your data set, which will provide fundamental demographic measures needed for evidence-based um, decision making. And that's really what we want to achieve uh, as part of this course. And um, that has been done before, as Gloria said, there has been a number of courses that uh, or workshops that have been supported by the Brisbane Accord Group, so a group of uh, development partners uh, that led to uh, several vital statistics reports. I have a few on this slide with the cover pages from uh, from different countries, including Kiribati and Vanuatu, who are also participating in this course, who I think um, four or five years ago attended a, a similar workshop but that was, of course, back then uh, face to face and uh, managed to uh, to publish a vital statistics report. Uh, so that's, that's, we really hope that uh, we'll be able to support you and that you, towards the end of the course or even afterwards, you you manage to produce such a vital statistics report. Uh, Gloria, I think you wanted to show a bit more on the vital statistics report. Yes, I could um, try and project. Uh... Just a minute. So are you able to see my screen? Yes, yes, we can. All right. So I just wanted to show you an example of a vital statistics report. And sorry, please ignore the windows that are open. Um, so this is something that one of the countries, Nauru, produced. Um, this is this covers their 2000 to two, two, their births and deaths for the period 2015 to 2017. So Nauru uh, attended this kind of workshop and they brought their data for 2015 to 2017. And they were able to produce a report that covers these um, sections. We, they had an introduction section with um, talking about which data sources they had used the level of completeness of their data sources, and then a chapter on births and fertility where they tabulated their births by different variables like age of mother, nationality, number of births, and then they were also able to compute some important fertility indicators like crude birth rate, sex ratio at birth, age specific fertility rate and total fertility rate. And then you can also see they had mortality data, which they disaggregated also by age, place of death, and then they were also able to compute all of these indicators. And lastly, they also had causes of death data, which they were able to disaggregate by age and link and list um, and develop tables for leading causes of death by, yes, by different age groups and by, by sex. And then the last part also covered some recommendations based on their report. So this is, um, I can see the went ahead to produce almost 35 tabulations and 12 figures. But uh, this is just to tell you that um, uh, the Nauru team joined this course just like you have joined this course. And st step by step, we were able to work with them to tabulate their data to understand what uh, indicators they can be able to produce. And then after that, to come up with short paragraphs, which eventually led to the report. So when you see the report, it might look like it is something that is uh, very 
big and very difficult to come about, but it's it's a gradual process. And, and we believe that with your participation through this course, as we move through from one module to another, you will be able to slowly by slowly build towards that kind of a report. Um, David, I think let's project there. Any, any questions so far? Or any comments? Right, so no comments. So David, let's project the other slides, please. Um, so, I think, Chloe. Cool. Yep. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thanks, Gloria. Um, so I'm going to say a little bit about the modality of this nine week course and let you know where you can find the resources to support. So we will be having one, one webinar every Monday, which will last between 60 and 90 minutes. And that will be at 12 o'clock midday in New Caledonia time every week. And during these webinars, we will be going through the course material and also sharing practical examples of data analysis for use in the final report. And during this weekly webinar, you can also feel free to ask us any questions that you may also have about the course material. And then from Monday to Thursday, we would like you to complete a weekly assignment where you will be applying what you have learned during the webinar to your own data. And this will all contribute to the development of your vital statistics report. And if possible, we would like you to submit your assignment by Thursday evening so that we can review them before the following week. Um, but we understand that there may be time constraints, so we're also flexible on this. Um, during the week, you, you're also encouraged to get in touch with us if you have any questions regarding the assignment. And we will be more than happy to set up tutorials where we can work through the assignment step by step together. Ideally, these tutorials will be held on Wednesday or Thursday. So this slide just provides an overview of the course content and the topics we will be covering in each module. So the first three modules will focus on data quality, including data cleaning and assessing the completeness of data. Um, modules four and five will focus, focus on birth and fertility analysis, and then module six through to nine will focus on mortality analysis, including a specific mortality analysis and life expectancy. These are the main materials that you will be using throughout the course, including the links on where to find them. There are two guidebooks which are really useful for explaining in more detail the data analysis and also how to produce a specific analysis for the vital statistics report. There's also a vital statistics report template which you can use and you can adapt to your own vital statistics report and two Excel workbooks to create the tables and figures to go into the report. We will also be sharing these slides with you after this session, so you'll have all the relevant links to these resources as well. <clears throat> and then these are the friendly faces of the facilitators who you will meet over the duration of the course, most of whom you were introduced to at the beginning of this session. Um, some of the facilitators will be teaching specific modules and some of those you will see throughout the duration of the course, such as myself, David, Ulysse and Gloria. Uh, we also have Lauren Moran joining us from the Australian Bureau of Statistics for sessions later on in the course. We've provided our email addresses here, so please don't hesitate to get in touch with one of us if you have any questions about the course or in case you need extra support, we would be very happy to help. Um, and with that, I'll come back over to Gloria to go through the data that you will be using for the course. Thank you. Thank you, Chloe.
Um, so uh, you may have seen that uh, in the concept note that we sent out, we requested you to start preparing your data for the course. And we on this slide, we have we just wanted to reemphasize um, the variables which we will be using from module two onwards. So we would like you to have uh, your bath data. And in this case, we are talking about live baths live birth data and within that data, it will be very useful if your data covers the variables that are listed. That's the first, the names and the date of birth, the sex of the child, the place of birth, place of residence, the parents' details. Um, and then, uh, oh, I can see we, we asked you to indicate there whether the, the, the data is, uh, the, the birth is a live birth or a still birth, but at the course we will be particularly analyzing live birth data. And basically the information that you collect through your civil registry about, about the birth of a child is what we will be analyzing. So we encourage you to ensure that you include all the variables. And similarly for deaths, you can see uh, it's basically information about the deceased and um, also, um, yeah, basically it's, it's information about the deceased and um, the cause of, of death. So um, this is what we would encourage you to have. Of course, different countries collect different variables. So for instance, you might not be collecting place of residence or you might be collecting it not by village or province, but in a different way. So what we mean is that everything that is listed here does not have to be a complete replica of what you are collecting, but we encourage you to bring with you, to have with you all the variables that you're collecting. And in that sense, we would like to encourage you to have this data tabulated in the format that you can see. So we'll have one record per row. So like when you're looking at row one, we mean that this is the birth of, let's say, Jeremy. The, the baby is called Jeremy, and this all the records along this line belong to Jeremy. And then in the next slide, line, you have Gloria or someone else. And then we would like uh, to recommend that you 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 also have one field per column. So this is basically the structure in which your data we recommend should be in and mm, it will be nice to have that in Excel format. And if you go back to the concept note, you will have, uh, you will see the same information provided. Um, and don't worry about uh, something like period of birth, any classifications, just ensure that uh, your data is, yeah, one record per, per row and one field per column. And then, um, yes, so, as a part of the assignment for today's session, we would like uh, to encourage you to make sure that you have your data sets ready. Um, we asked you to have this data from the Civil Registration Office, and if you can have corresponding data from the Health of uh, from the Health Office, that will be great. But if it's not available, that's also fine. And then also you can ask your NSO to provide you with a denominated database for instance, on the recent census or any projections that you've conducted, and we will use that data for uh, as denominators for the indicators that we'll be computing. But basically next week, what we will would like you to have at the minimum is your birth data. Um, uh, let me see your birth and death data, because in any case, you'll extract them at the same time. And uh, so next week, we will, we will be working on cleaning that data and ensuring it's in, a, in the right format. So between now if and then, if you have any questions, if you'd like to send across your data to just verify with us whether that's the format that it's in, needed in, please feel free. Um, so, but yeah, but basically that's, that's, the, that's the assignment for next week. And that brings us to the end of Today's session, uh, I think I'll take it back to David in case he has any additional comments or any of the facilitators, but we'd like to really thank you for your patience and attention today. We trust that the, the session was clear and please feel free to ask any questions, to send any comments, including now. Um, if you feel like we are moving very quickly and you prefer to have a slower pace, uh, we are very flexible and happy to adjust to 
what will be suitable for you. Yeah, thank you very much, Gloria. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, I just want to re-emphasize, do not hesitate to contact us in case you have any question. Uh, we are a large group of facilitators, so there should always be one of us uh, able to, to help you very quickly. Um, so, yeah, really, we are, um, you know, you have your, our email addresses, so um, please feel, feel free to contact us. Um, yeah, otherwise, I do not have much else to, to add, except that I look forward to seeing all of you next week. Uh, where we really start working uh, on the on the report, so that that's quite exciting. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, I think we can close the session for today. Unless we have any questions, Wish. <laughs> <laughs> any questions or comment? Hi, uh, can I just ask a quick question? This is in uh, related to the that we have, sorry, this is Mong from Palau. <laughs> uh, this question is in relation to the assignment that we have, uh, getting our data uh, together for uh, the course. Is there like a, a list of uh, variables that you know, are like what we should have at minimum? I know coming from the health side, we have quite a few, uh, uh, you know, different variables that we can contribute to the data set that we'll use for the course, but is there like a minimum set that we should uh, ensure are included in our data set moving forward, or is it really just up to us? Um, uh, yes, we, we did recommend a minimum data set in the concept note um, for we did include um, some specific variables um, for both birth and death. And uh, we also, as a part of that, anticipate that not everyone will have all of that. But yeah, that can give you a bit of a pointer as to what to look out for. Thanks. I, I was hoping there was like a, a list and not just a mention in the narrative, but thank you for that. Ah, OK. Any other comments, questions? Okay, I think uh, that's all from my side, David. Over to you. Thank you very much, Gloria. So I don't have uh, much to add except that uh, see you next week. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Thank you. Yeah, we're going